Good morning. Praise the Lord. My name is Bella Kaigua. And by the grace of God, your lay reader here at St. Paul's. And privileged this morning to just uh, bring the message of the Lord to you. But above all, Christ is Lord in my heart. And I say that with the greatest of humility. Because Christ found me before he, I found him. So just being here in front of you is a privilege, which I don't take for granted. At one time, I was sitting where you were sitting, as a member of a congregation. But the Lord thought, saw it fit to bring me to this other side to minister to his people. Praise be to God. I want us to, if you have your bulletin, where you have the Sunday School Memory Verse, I want us to look at and remind ourselves of the sub-theme of February 2023. We know that the Bishop shared with us the theme, the overall theme of 2023, which is the year of ownership and servanthood. The guiding verse is Ephesians 2, 19, which reads, Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens of God's people and also members of his household. And so the sub-theme from our main theme this month is owning the spirit of permanence. Owning the spirit of permanence. What is permanence? The dictionary I read said that it is the state or quality of lasting or remaining unchanged indefinitely. And therefore it means stability. So this theme is reminding us to own that permanence as citizens of God's kingdom and members of his household. It's a permanent space for all of us and all who have declared that Christ is Lord. We seek, all of us seek, the permanence as we grow. Because this is growth. Being in Christ means growth. And I want you, if you already haven't started reading, I want you to read the Vicar's Word, which is titled, Christians Under Construction. And so we are all under construction. And as I reflected on this word, or this sub-theme, especially this week, I could not help but remember the disaster that happened this week in Turkey. I'm sure all of you saw one or two or three videos. It was indeed a dark week for Turkey and the affected countries. On Monday the 6th, an earthquake with a magnitude of 7.5 on the Richter scale struck Turkey and the sur some surrounding countries. This was a major earthquake. And the videos were horrifying. It was like one was watching a horror movie, but this was reality. The death toll, as of yesterday, was 25,000. And yet, in the midst of all this, we saw God's grace and mercy through the rescue of a family trapped for 129 hours. And so there's this big disaster. And more so what remains in my mind is the crumbling down of apartment blocks like 
they were made of jelly or something that was very, very fragile. These were buildings that we call permanent. Apartment blocks, because they are built of brick and mortar. And this became a stark reminder to me and to all of us in this month of owning the spirit of permanence the things of this world are not permanent. So my question to all of us is, what do you perceive as permanent in your life? Something that you perceive as stable in your life. Is it your brick and mortar house or houses, apartment blocks? Or is it other investments in your life Insurance, life insurance, money market, bonds. As believers in Jesus Christ, and as we are reminded in Ephesians 2.19, this is not our kingdom. We are citizens of God's kingdom and members of his household, where it is stable and permanent. And I think at this point, we should pray for the victims of the earthquake. Let us pray. Gracious Father, we want to thank you for your word and this reflection of our sub-theme for the month of February. We continue to pray for the countries affected by the earthquake, Turkey, Cyprus, Jordan, Lebanon, Syria, Iraq, Georgia, and Armenia. May your comfort surround the bereaved families as they mourn the loss of their loved ones. As a world unites to help these countries, may you enable supplies for food, water, and medication to reach them. We ask this through your Son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Revelation 4. My sermon won't be long and it will be based on the New Testament reading from Revelation 4. I will also look at Psalm 148 briefly. The title is Better things ahead for citizens of God's kingdom. C.S. Lewis has a quote that says, Joy is the serious business of heaven. I even have that quote in my WhatsApp profile, if any of you have ever looked at them at that profile. Why? Because I have come to know that there is another kingdom that I belong to. Very simple. The kingdom of heaven where joy abounds. And so in our New Testament reading, Revelation 4 gives us a sneak preview of this heavenly home. The place of permanence, where there is stability and a lasting place that is unchanging, a place where there is no weeping and no mourning. And C.S. Lewis also has a very famous quote where I got my title from that goes like this, there are far, far better things ahead than any we leave behind. Very appropriate description because we all live by hope. We are hoping for better things ahead of us. 
When you spend the day today and rest in the evening, you're hoping for a better day tomorrow. All of us are always hoping for better things ahead. But there is better things ahead of this life. The kingdom of earth, we have a kingdom in heaven for those who believe. And so when John wrote Revelations, he was a political prisoner of Domitian, the Roman emperor at that time, on the, on the island of Patmos. These were times that Christians were really persecuted. Persecution of the Christians was so bad. And you can imagine at this particular time, the Romans considered them atheists. Why? Because the Romans had so many gods, so many gods. And so when they claimed, when the Christians claimed that the pagan gods did not exist, they just deemed them atheists because they believed if you did not believe in their gods, then you did not believe in God at all. They even were blamed for not praying to these gods when the disaster struck. And so I believe, even as John got this vision in the book of Revelation, this was to encourage Christians of the better things that were to come. Because in this world, and we read in the word that we shall have trouble. But Christ encourages us because he has overcome. And when we read the first verse, we can see that indeed this was an encouragement. This is what verse 1 says. After I looked, and there before me was an door standing open in heaven and the voice I had first heard speaking to me like a trumpet said come here and I will show you what you must take what must take place after this and so you can see that John hears this voice and and what stood out for me and the musicians will bear me witness, is that this voice, as he stood before him, as he stood before the open door in heaven, spoke like a trumpet. To me, I know trumpets are used in beautiful, mellow, soft music like jazz. So I was just imagining that voice that John heard I love jazz and classical music, so I was just trying to picture that voice, a beautiful voice that was speaking to him. And so I'm looking at this chapter 4, and the first three verses describes the throne of God. And this is what it says. It says that this heavenly throne is encircled by a shining rainbow. The awesomeness of the throne of God. And he is literally indescribable because they, the description here says that he has an appearance of jasper and ruby, precious stones. Then verse 4 to 8 describes those around the throne. We're told of the 24 elders, probably symbolizing the completion and representing 12 tribes of Israel and the 12 apostles. So there's the 24 elders surrounding the throne and you can put yourself there, representing the masses and the believers. And then there's the angelic beings, the cherubims, the angels. 
And what are they doing? Verse 8b to 11 describes what they, the two are, are doing day and night. It says, they never stop singing. And so the business in the heavenly throne is praise and worship. Praising God and worshiping him. God, the one on the throne, is honored by all creations, proclaiming him as holy and worthy of worship because he is the creator of everything. And this is what we had in our psalm today. This is a, a praise psalm, praising the Lord. And so, brothers and sisters, there are better things ahead. Despite the earthquakes, despite the economy, despite the heat, despite the drought, we're being reminded that there's another place, the kingdom of God, where things are stable, things are permanent. The permanent home where praise and worship is 24-7, 365 days. And my question to all of us, can you, can I, confidently proclaim ownership of this heavenly home? To invite Jesus Christ in your heart is simple. In the third portion of our order of service, and I can see, <laughs> I can see Ben is here, and I would have liked it uh, projected, but that prayer is always said every Sunday by all of us corporately, where we are asking God to forgive us, and that's all it takes, recognizing that you are a sinner repenting from the sin and surrendering all to our Lord Jesus Christ. The prayer is there. I'm asking that next time that you're reading that prayer, even after this, where it says our, you say I. It's a personal prayer that one makes to become one with Christ, to surrender to him, to surrender all. Because Hebrews 3, 7 reminds us, today if you hear his voice, it doesn't say tomorrow, it says today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your heart. That's also Psalm 95. And so as we await the day, the day that God has planned for us, we can prepare to praise him for who he is, our creator. And Psalm 148 is an invitation for all of creation and its inhabitants, heaven and earth, to join in the praise of God like a universal chorus. This is the psalm, and allow me to read it again. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from heavens. Praise him in the heights above. Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all his heavenly hosts. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise him, you highest heavens and new waters above the sea, the skies. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded and they were created. He set them in place forever and ever. He gave a decree that will never pass away. Praise the Lord on earth. 
you great sea creatures and all ocean depths, lightning and hail, snow and clouds, stormy winds that do his bidding, you mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild animals and all cattle, small creatures and flying birds, kings of the earth and all nations, you princes and all rulers on earth, young men and maidens, old men and children, let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His splendor is above the earth and the heavens. He has raised up for his people a horn, the praise of all his saints, of Israel. The people close to his heart. Praise the Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, so it is now, and will be forever. Amen. God bless you.